hello, welcome everyone. We uh, will kick off the uh, most exciting special city council meeting that I've ever been to, uh, where we're going to deal with um, consolidating a number of fees and charges uh, and uh, into one bylaw, and that requires repealing a bunch of other bylaws. And each time we repeal a bylaw, um, we're going to have to have three readings to do that. And so get set for a riveting afternoon of three readings and motions to have third reading and a motion for third reading. Um, we've all seen the routine. Uh, this is a bit of a technical requirement. Um, thankfully, my understanding is this isn't something that we would have to do every time. We're going to have to do this once. And then in the future, to amend any of the fees and charges, we'll be able to just make amendments to the one fees and charges bylaw. So get set. Um, and I'm going to turn it over uh, to Stephanie Cajolet and uh, Director Arlen Miller, um, or just to Stephanie, uh, who's going to take us through. Uh, I think, Stephanie, you're going to give us an introduction to the bylaw um, that we're uh, considering repealing um, uh, or amending. And uh, council members will have a, a brief opportunity for questions. Um, but uh, for the majority of this, I think Stephanie's going to give us a bit of an intro so uh, we know what it is that we're addressing. Uh, Stephanie. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, as part of the approved 2019-2022 budget, management undertook a comprehensive review of city fees and charges. The intent of the review is to incorporate all fees and charges into a cons consolidated bylaw with an updated fee schedule, which will provide ease of administration and enable annual review. So previously, all of the uh, fees and charges were recognized across multiple bylaws and policies, and um, this will bring them all into one uh, single bylaw. So the fees and charges were, um, all of the fees and charges across the organization were re evaluated as part of this review process and adjustments were proposed where it was appropriate to do so. So the initial fee schedule was presented to uh, Council Committee of the Whole at the end of April and that resulted in a few minor adjustments. So the only thing I would um, uh, say for the consolidated um, bylaw is that from the first view, a few of the rates may appear a little bit differently um, just because the GST was removed from the actual rate. So the new sort of a revised rate will be plus um, GST. So this affects mostly our drop-in um, admissions and membership rates for facilities like East Link, the Twin Ice Arenas, and uh, the outdoor pool. Um, so council may notice that there are a few procedures um, included in the total package. So the amendments um, for those procedures definitely relate to the fees and charges uh, review, um, but they will be able to be reviewed and approved by the city manager. So the first one would be, um, recommenda or recommendation would be that council give three readings to bylaw C1395 being the new fees, rates and charges bylaw. Okay, thanks very much. Um, so we will look for a motion for first reading and we'll start to my right with Councilor Bressy. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd move the council give first reading to bylaw C-1395 being the fees, rates, and charges bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. So, you know, I'm, uh, all the things that I say every time we do all the different readings, I'm going to say them once on this first one and then I'm not going to say them again. Um, so there's no discussion debate on first reading. Please vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd move that we give second reading to bylaw C-1395. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you, Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Our Worship. I'll, I'd move that we have third reading of bylaw C-1395 at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much. This is another one of those things that I'll say just for this one time around. This is a motion to have third and final reading. We're going to face this a whole bunch of times. Um, but before we move on to that third and final reading, we have to have a motion to have it here uh, this afternoon. Is there any discussion or debate on the merits of having third and final reading? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Council Bressy. Thank you. I'd move that we give third reading to bylaw C-1395 being the fees, rates, and charges bylaw. Thanks very much, Council Bressy. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, uh, please vote. Motion carries as well. Okay, we're on to uh, C-718A. So this um, bylaw relates to information to electors um, and the information uh, taken 
bylaw. So there was a question that came forward um, with that. If we are repealing this um, bylaw, any information that is uh, public record, such as other bylaws or requests for committee council uh, minutes, that can be found on the city website or certainly could be um, directed to um, any resident or inquirer for that. Any other requests uh, for information would have to follow the process outlined in accordance with the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. So that's the FOIP. So then documents are then reviewed in accordance with that legislation and information that is permitted to be disclosed um, would be released to the person that requested it. Okay, thanks very much. Can I get a motion for first reading? Councillor Minhas. Uh, I, move, I move to give the first reading by laws C-718A being by law to repeal by law C-718. Thanks very much, Councilor Minhas. Uh, no discussion and debate. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Minhas. Council give the second reading, reading to bylaw C-718A. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Minhas. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Councilor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, FOIP can be an arduous piece of legislation for some people involved, but I'm not an expert. I've never actually had to access it myself. If we're moving people's rights to uh, under FOIP instead of under uh, council bylaw, is there gonna, is there any potential for there to become bigger barriers to the public accessing this information, or for them to have to go through more process they need? I'm, I'm just trying to protect. I don't want to get it harder for the public to do this under potential future administrations if we lose this. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. With the legislation that was um, introduced and passed being the FOIP Act, there is a requirement to, um, for requesters to request information in a specific way, and then it gets vetted that way. So that process is all managed through our Legislative Services Department. So I don't anticipate there being any changes to that. Um, there are members of Legislative Services here, if there's anything to add to that. Ms. Norris Kirk. Thank you, that, that's correct. Even the way it was currently written, they still would have had to, have go, th to go through the FOIP back, so it doesn't change anything that way. Okay, thanks, any other questions or comments? And seeing none, I will call for the vote on second reading. Please vote. Thank you. The motion carries, Councillor Minhas. You'll just have to get your microphone, you'll just have to get your microphone. Sorry, I have a third reading of the bylaws C C seven one eight A at the meeting. This meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Minhas. A motion to have third and final. Sorry, to have third and final reading at this meeting. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Motion carries. We can have third reading, Councilor Minhas. Yeah, give the third reading to bylaw C seven one eight. A being by law to repeal by law C718. Thanks very much, Council Manhas. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And that will take us to bylaw C747. C being a bylaw to repeal bylaw C747A. So, uh, Council, on your, on your cheat sheet, uh, I think that we uh, had to acknowledge that it was C-747A that we're actually repealing. Stephanie. Um, so, there, this uh, fee charges is included in the new consolidated bylaw, so the um, request is just to repeal 747A. Okay. Um, so, can I have a motion for first reading, Councillor Friesen? Thank you. <clears throat> Your eminence, who is not a demagogue. Good one. Good one. <laughs> no, nothing? Okay, I was trying. Trying to play the game. Uh, so I would like to move that we give first reading to bylaw C-747C, being a bylaw to repeal bylaw C-747A. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Motion for first reading. There's no discussion or debate. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen. I move that we give second reading to bylaw 7C, C747C. Okay, 
Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate on second reading of C-747C? Seeing none, uh, please vote. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen. I move that we have third reading of bylaw C-747C at this meeting. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. A motion to have third and final reading. Any discussion, debate as to the merits? Seeing none, uh, please vote. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen. Thank you, and I move that we give third reading to bylaw C-747C, being a bylaw to repeal C-747A. Thanks very much. Councillor Friesen, any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Uh, so next we'll move on to bylaw C-1267B. Stephanie. Thank you, Mayor Given. This uh, bylaw relates to police services uh, fees and charges, which have all been included in the new consolidated bylaw. So the request would be to repeal C 1267. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, I get a motion for first reading, Councillor Plot. Thanks, Mayor Given. Sorry, hello. Uh, <laughs> I'd make a motion that we give uh, three readings to bylaw C. 1267. Just, just first for now. Okay. Motion to make uh, first reading of bylaw C-1267B. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Palat. No discussion or debate on first reading. Please vote. I said your name. Thanks very much, Council. Thanks for giving. I'd make a motion that we'd have a second reading to bylaw C-1267B. Thanks very much, Councillor Platt. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, please vote. That motion carries. Councillor Platt. All right, thanks for giving. I'd make a motion that we have third reading of bylaw C-1267B at this meeting. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Platt. Any discussion or debate on the merits? Seeing none, please vote. Uh, that motion carries unanimously. We can't have third and final reading. All right, thank you. Um, I will make a motion to give third reading to bylaw C-1267B, being a bylaw to repeal bylaw C-1267. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Platt. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, uh, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And that will take us to the next side of our page. Uh, bylaw C-1325B. Stephanie. Thank you, Mayor Given. This bylaw is to repeal bylaw C-1325, which was the Planning and Development and Engineering Services Fees and Charges Bylaw. All of those fees, charges, and rates have been moved into the consolidated bylaw. Thanks very much. Can I get a motion for first reading, Councillor Eason? Thank you, Your Highness. I would move that Council give first reading to Bylaw C 1325B, being a bylaw to repeal Bylaw C 1325. Okay, thanks very much for that first reading. Please vote. That motion carries. Councillor Fieson. Thank you, Your Highness. I would move that Council give second reading to Bylaw C 1325B. Right. Thanks very much, Councillor Fieson. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. That motion carries as well. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Your Highness. I would move that Council have third reading of Bylaw C-1325B at this meeting. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate as to the merits of having third and final reading? Seeing none, uh, please vote. Let's take a look. Thank you. Motion does carry unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council give third reading to Bylaw C 1325B, being a bylaw to repeal Bylaw C 1325. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. That motion carries. Councillor 
motion carries as well. That will take us to uh, policy 201. Um, Stephanie, do you want to give us an introduction? Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Um, policy 201 was initially developed to ensure fair and equitable application of fees and charges to users of uh, public recreation. So all of the fees and uh, have been incorporated into the consolidated bylaw, so we'll still support the city's commitment of leisure time for recreation. One um, important thing to note is that a number of the drop-in admission rates and membership rates included in this policy have actually been um, adjusted so that it will, with the intent to reduce barriers and uh, in promote increased access to community recreation. Okay, thanks very much. Um, can I get a motion to repeal that policy, Councillor Bressy? Thank you, Mayor Given, may I ask a question before I make a motion? Sure, absolutely. I'm just curious, part of the policy part of the policy that we're looking at repealing has some value statements in it in terms of it says that council uh, understands the importance of rec of recreation as a basic human need and it and another value that it states is council values make sure that people of all economic abilities and different family circumstances have access to recreation. Do we have any other policies or any other documents that have been formally approved by council? that outlines similar values that this body has? Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, I'm not aware of any specific policies, but certainly uh, the city has membership that sits on a regional recreation committee, so certainly supports the importance of recreation within um, the community. Also, um, our largest recreation facility, being the CKC campus, also supports a recreation access program, which improves access for low-income um, families and some of the rates that we have adjusted in the consolidated bylaw should actually will are actually less than what our previous membership and drop in admission rates were. So it should also um, improve access for families. Councilor Ressi, can I ask somebody else to make this motion just so I don't get myself into trouble with procedures in a? Well, uh, I appreciate. Uh, I think what you're raising here is that uh, at least a part of the policy uh, spoke to the city of Grand Prairie's intent around providing uh, recreation facilities. Um, and if this, I think the the concern here is if this policy is uh, completely with re repealed, there isn't anything on the books saying why the city council of Grand Prairie supports uh, recreation or why we may choose to subsidize certain parts of it. So perhaps that's a referral to committee. I could see us repealing this and then referring the issue of um, that policy level approach to the appropriate standing committee. Um, so if, if, if there's a follow on, you could do both um, uh, because we do have the technical matter of having to withdraw that first part. But if we also said that it was important for Grand Prairie City Council to establish in policy why we do recreation, and that's that's a worthwhile discussion, and we can also refer that to the appropriate standing committee. So, are you, would you be comfortable doing the repeal on that basis? Yeah, would it be all right? It, would you be comfortable with me making a motion to refer first? I don't know if I could support the repeal if I don't know council's sure. willing to talk to sure. you. Yeah, awesome. Well, in that case, uh, let me think about this for a second. I would move that council. Um, I would move that council refer refer policy refer potential policies around the value of recreation and the importance of accessibility to our recreation programs to the appropriate standing committee. And just the intent of that uh, motion to be clear to administration is at this point, I'm not hoping to get out of this, uh, out of this motion or report or anything like that brought forward to committee. I'm just asking, saying council, hey, it would be great if we talk about it. And if there's desire that committee's able, then maybe we send them to do work then. But I'm not asking for work. I'm just asking that this conversation continue at committee and we commit to having more conversation before we repeal this. Uh, after we, well, we'll see. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, fair enough. Any uh, discussion or debate on Councillor Bressy's motion of referral? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Bressy. Well, thank you, Council. And with commitment to have further conversation, I'm happy to make the motion to repeal policy 201 being the fees and charges policy. Okay. Thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, please vote. That motion carries. That'll take us to policy 6025, uh, being the release and sale of mapping products and services policy. It's casually. 
Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, this policy, the fees and charges in this policy have been concluded in the consolidated bylaw, so the request would be to repeal bylaw 6025, or sorry, policy 6025. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll go next to Councillor Minhas. Thank you, well, Mayor Given. <clears throat> I repeal, repeal the policy 6025 being the, the release and sale of mapping and the products and service policy. Thanks very much, Councilor Menhaus. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. That motion carries. That will take us to bylaw C964F. Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. The only um, amendment uh, required for this bylaw relates to item 8.1. So. Um, it relate, previously related to uh, the fees associated with the bylaw. So the recommendation would be to delete section 8.1 in its entirety and replace with a statement that reads, an appellant shall pay to the city an ad fee in accordance with bylaw C1395, Schedule A. At the same time, a notice or appeal is served on the secretary of the board. Okay. Thanks very much. Can I get a motion for first reading, please, Councillor Friesen? Thank you. <clears throat> I appreciate being called upon by such a renowned and prominent leader such as yourself. I'm going to start singing them next time just for fun. I move that we give first reading to bylaw C964F being an amendment to the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Uh, no discussion on first reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen. I move that we give second reading to bylaw C964F. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, uh, I, I would just actually make a note for administration that we're in our uh, report where it said an ad fee. I was actually questioning what a AD was, whether that was a, a abbreviation. Um, so you may want to spell it with a lowercase. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's an abbre it's a abbreviation of some kind. Um, any any other discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That second reading carries. Council Friesen. I move that we have third reading of bylaw C nine six four F at this meeting. Thanks very much, Council Friesen. A motion to have third and final reading. I don't see anybody ringing in. Please vote. That motion carries unanimously. Councilor Friesen. I move that we give third reading to bylaw C-964F being an amendment to the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board bylaw. Thanks very much, Councilor Friesen. Uh, any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you, that motion carries, and we're on to bylaw C1064J, an amendment to the business license bylaw, Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. This um, bylaw relates to the licensing and regulations of uh, businesses. The amendments that are proposed are related to housekeeping items, and there are some changes required um, as a result, as per the Freedom of Information and Privacy legislation. The other um, amendment to this bylaw would be to remove Schedule B, which currently includes the license fees, as those license fees have been incorporated into the consolidated bylaw. Okay, thank you very much. Can I get a motion for first reading, Councillor Plot? Thanks, Mayor Given. I'll leave the singing to my colleagues on each side of me who do a good job at Old Canada a little bit better than I do. So uh, I'll give first reading to bylaw C1064J, being an amendment to the business bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Councillor Plot. Business license bylaw, sorry. Thank you. Uh, motion for first reading, please vote. Thank you, that motion carries, Councillor Plot. Thanks, Mayor Given. I'd make a motion that we give second reading to bylaw C1064J. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Councillor Bressy. Great, thank you, Mayor Given. Just a question for administration. I noticed that uh, along in the housekeeping items of this, a few prohibitions on licensing get removed, including uh, their 
there is currently on the books a prohibition of anybody who has a recent criminal conviction involving fraud or dishonesty from receiving a hawking or peddling license. That would be eliminated in this amendment. And also, uh, currently as the bylaw stands, somebody who's currently being charged with a criminal offense or a controlled substance offense can't get a chauffeur license. I wonder if you could speak a little bit to why those prohibitions are being removed and if there's other things that would remain in the bylaw that could give our citizens protection from people who maybe shouldn't be in these positions of potential trust. Uh, Thank you, Mayor Given. I would defer a response to that to Director Manuel. Director Manuel. All right, thank you for the question. Uh, to answer it, it's uh, the automatic exclusion uh, as a result of those charges is uh, is removed from the bylaw. That is correct. However, however, every applicant under uh, Section Eight, uh, Sub One, Sub C, um, is reviewed to determine uh, whether there's reasonable grounds not to grant the business license based on things such as uh, affecting the safety, health, or welfare of the community. So um, legislative services with our, our previous uh, legislative services manager believed that it would be more prudent to utilize that section as opposed to the existing uh, wording right now. In the future update of the um, upcoming business license bylaw, uh, there's even more sp specifics that uh, will address this particular item. So I think we're on to Councillor Plot was done the first reading. And Councillor Plot, if you want to carry on a second. Okay, make a motion I have give a second reading to bylaw C one zero six four J. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Um, please vote. And I'm looking for one more council. I noticed that the voting things have been a little sticky today. Make sure you're vote. Thanks very much. That motion carries. Councillor Plot. Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, make a motion that we have third reading of bylaw by -law C1064J at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much. Motion to have third and final reading. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Councillor Plot. All right, then I'll make a last motion to give third reading to bylaw C1064J at this meeting. Thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. That will take us to bylaw C 1138F. Uh, Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. The purpose of this um, bylaw is the in uh, previously was the incentives for payment of taxes and penalties on unpaid taxes and payment of taxes by installments. So the amendments would include renaming the bylaw um, to be a bylaw to provide for the penalties and unpaid taxes and payment of taxes by inst installments. Wherever the words business revi rev revitalization zone and BRZ appears, it shall be replaced with Business Improvement Area, or BIA, and Section 3 would be deleted from the bylaw in its entirety as those uh, rates would be included in the consolidated bylaw. Okay, thank you very, thank you very much. We'll look to Councillor Thiessen for a motion. Thank you, Your Grace. I would move that Council give first reading to bylaw C-1138F, being an amendment to the incentives for payment of taxes, penalties on unpaid taxes, and payment of taxes by installments bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, no discussion, debate on first reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Your Grace. I would move that Council give second reading to bylaw C-1138F. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. Second reading carries. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Your Grace. I would move that Council allow and have third reading of bylaw C 1138F at this meeting. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Motion to have third and final reading. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion.
Motion carries unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Your Grace. I would move that Council give third reading to bylaw C-1138F, being an amendment to the incentives for payment of taxes, penalties on unpaid taxes, and payment of taxes by installments bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. That motion carries as well. That'll take us to bylaw C-1166H. An amendment to the traffic bylaw, Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, there are a few housekeeping, housekeeping amendments that are recommended as a part of the uh, bylaw amendment. So it would be um, updating and replacing uh, titles. Um, section 12.4 uh, references a specific fee, which is now included in the consolidated bylaw. So the recommendation would be to amend that section to reference the consolidated by law C-1395. The other amendment would be to delete Schedule 1A in its entirety as those rates have been, fees have been included in the consolidated by law. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, Councilor Bressi, we'll look to you for first reading. Thank you, Mayor Given. It's fun discovering all these technical requirements we have. I would move that we give first reading to bylaw C-1166H being an amendment to the traffic bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Motion for first reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Bressy. I would move that we give second reading to bylaw C 1166H. Okay, thanks, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing no one ringing in, please vote. Thank you. Second reading carries. Councillor Bressy move that we have third reading of bylaw C 1166H at this meeting. Okay, thanks, Councilor Bressi. Any discussion or debate on the merits of having third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Councilor Bressi. Thank you. I'd move that we give third reading to bylaw C 1166H being an amendment to the traffic bylaw. Thanks very much, Councilor Bressi. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. Motion carries, and we'll take us to bylaw C 1226D, an amendment to the Animals and Responsible Pet Ownership Bylaw. Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. A number of the proposed amendments to this bylaw are housekeeping items. So uh, one would be uh, replacing the word license, spelled C-E, with the word license, spelled S-E. Um, there are a number of sections which reference the fee schedule, so the rec amendment um, would be to amend all of those sections and replace it with wording that reflects bylaw C 1395 Schedule A. There's also housekeeping items um, to update the current titles and then finally to delete sec Schedule A in its entirety as the fees have been included in the consolidated bylaw. Okay, thank you very much. So can I have a motion for first reading, Councillor Minhas? Thank you, Will Mayor Given again. And, uh, Give the first reading to bylaw C 1226D being an amended amendment to the animal and uh, responsible pet owners bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. Uh, no discussion or debate on first reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, Councillor Minhas. Give the second reading bylaw C 1226D. Thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Uh, I guess I would just ask, are there any uh, areas where we reference the color of animals uh, that uh, the bylaw controls? And if so, how did we spell color? Is it with a U? I want to make sure if we're strictly Canadian formatting that we also use that with reference to the word color in the bylaw. And I appreciate administration may not have had a chance to check that out ahead of time, and it's probably relevant at this point, but uh, I've, is there any other discussion or debate on second reading? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, Councillor Friesen. Thank you. In uh, absence of um, our dear friend, Councillor Blackburn, um, is license with an S being used in both as a noun and a verb then? Yes, it would be. Can I take issue with that? The Canadian Good. spelling in in Canada, license with an S is a verb, and license with a C is a noun. Um, no. I just 
council meeting. And I think, not I think only that, fun, they're also education. Yeah, I and Councillor Blackburn, I know would concur. And if he's watching, I got your back, Clyde. Okay, I don't see anybody else ringing in with any discussion or debate. Uh, we'll call for the vote on second reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Minhas. Can I have a half have a third reading of bylaw C twelve twenty six D at this meeting. Thanks very much, Council Minhas. This must pass unanimously. Otherwise, our entire afternoon comes to a crashing halt. Uh, I don't see anybody ring in. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously, Councillor Minhas. Council gave the third reading to bylaw C-1226D being as amendment to the animal and responsible pet owners ownership bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Menhaas. Any discussion or debate? Please vote. Thank you, that motion carries and takes us to now bylaw C-1249A, an amendment to the Assessment Review Board bylaw. Ms. Casualty. Thank you, Mayor Given. The only amendment uh, proposed for this bylaw is to uh, delete a section that currently lists the fees for filing complaints and amend that with a statement that indicates the fee for filing complaints would be done so in accordance with uh, the new consolidated bylaw, C-1395. Okay, thank you very much. I'll look to Councillor Friesen for uh, first reading. Thank you, our illustrious potentate. No, oh, okay. I move that we <clears throat> give first reading to bylaw C 1294A being an amendment to the assessment review board bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Please vote. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen. It occurs to me, Mayor Given may go home with a swelled head after today. <laughs> I move that we give second reading to bylaw C 1249A. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen, who says that he, the mayor didn't have a swelled head before today. <laughs> Uh, any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen. Thank you. I move that we have third reading of bylaw C-1249A at this meeting. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate as the merits of having third and final reading? So I just can't get through without actually saying that. I just, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> have to. Uh, I don't see anybody ringing in. Please vote. Councillor Friesen. And I move that we give third reading to bylaw C 1249A being an amendment to the assessment review board bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. I don't see anybody ringing in with discussion debate, so I will call for the vote. Thank you. Motion carries as well. And takes us now to bylaw 1312B being an amendment to the fire services bylaw. Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. The amendments proposed for this bylaw really reflect um, the change in the fees. So uh, sections that previously referenced a specific fee would be replaced with wording that reflects the um, new consolidated bylaw. Section 33 would be eliminated entirely because it references one of the schedules, and then the schedules outlining the fees would be uh, removed, and uh, the new bylaw would take its place. Okay, thank you very much. We'll look to Councillor Pilot for a first reading. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I would ask we have first reading to bylaw C1312B, being an amendment to the fire services bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Pilot. I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Pilat. All right. Make a motion to give second reading to bylaw C-1312B. Thanks very much, Councillor Pilat. Uh, just wanted to interject to say that this is a little bit like, it feels a bit like a training session where you try to get in as many reps as you can. Maybe this is something that we should do annually or quarterly just so council members get reps and of making motions because we're all going to be pretty well practiced by the end of this. I don't see any other discussion or debate on second reading. Please vote. Should be three. That motion carries. Councillor Plot. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. I uh, make a motion that we have third reading of bylaw C three one three one two B at this meeting. Thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Third uh, motion to have third reading. 
please vote. That motion carries, Councillor, unanimously, Councillor Platt. All right, thank you, Mayor Gibbons. So I'll make a motion to give third reading to bylaw C1312B, be an amendment to the fire services bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please vote. That motion carries, and we'll take us to bylaw C1329A, an amendment to the building bylaw. Ms. Casually. Um, I think there's an error uh, on the sheet. This bylaw, this number should be C thirteen twenty eight A. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so the proposed amendments would be to delete the sections that uh, reflect the fees or refer to the fee schedule and uh, update the language so that it refers to the consolidated bylaw. There is uh, a new definition that would be added. Um, the Schedule C currently um, uh, violation fines. So the amendments would be everywhere in that uh, schedule where the word fees appears, that it would be replaced with the word uh, fines. And then Schedules A, B, and D would be removed as uh, they would. those fees are now included in the new bylaw. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, my lord. I would move that council give first reading to bylaw C 1328A, being an amendment to the building bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Thiessen, please move on to second reading. Thank you, my lord. I would move that council give second reading to bylaw C 1328A. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, please vote. That uh, motion carries. Councillor Thiessen, can you move on to the motion to have third and final reading? Thank you, my lord. I shall. I would move that council have third reading of bylaw C 1328A at this meeting. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. This is a motion to have third and final reading at this meeting. Uh, it must pass unanimously for us to move on. Should it not pass unanimously, then we would not be able to move on. Does anybody have any discussion or debate as to the merits of having third and final reading here this afternoon? Seeing none, please vote. It's easier if I do the thing that I feel like I need to do. I just do it really fast. <laughs> that motion passes unanimously. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, my lord. I would move that council give third reading to bylaw C-1328A, being an amendment to the building bylaw. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. I don't see anybody ringing in with discussion and debate. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And will take us to... C 1332A, an amendment to the Grand Prairie Cemeteries bylaw. Ms. Kajale. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, all of the amendments uh, proposed for this bylaw would um, be uh, listed as well as the Schedule A as they reference the uh, current fee schedule. The wording would be replaced to indicate that fees are in accordance with the new consolidated bylaw C 1395 Schedule A. Okay, thanks very much. Councilor Bressi, we'll look to you for our first reading. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move the council give first readings of bylaw C, uh, 1332A, being an amendment to the Grand Prairie Cemeteries bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Bressi. Motion for first reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Councilor Bressi. Thank you. I would move the council give second reading to bylaw C, uh, 1332A. And while we're talking cemeteries, I'd mention that Mayor Given is burying the competition, but... <laughs> Councillor Plot is discovering some good things in these motions too. Thank you. Um, any discussion or debate on second reading? I'm not sure where you dug up that comment, but it seems a little fast to. Um, I don't see anybody ring in. Please vote on second reading. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Bressy. I'd move the council have third reading of bylaw C 1332A at this meeting. Okay. Thanks very much, Council Bressi. If this motion doesn't pass unanimously, we cannot put this bylaw to rest. Uh, I will call for the vote. Please vote. That 
motion does carry unanimously. Thankfully, we won't have a bylaw wandering around as a zombie for the next couple of weeks. Councilor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that we give Third Reading's bylaw C 1332A being amendment to the Grand Prairie Cemetery's bylaw. Thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. One more, Council. Thank you. That motion carries, and that'll take us to bylaw seat 1334A, an amendment to the fixed charges for information services and documents provided by the city's assessment and taxation department bylaw. Probably my favorite bylaw. <laughs> Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, one of the amendments would be to rename the bylaw to be information, services, and documents provided by the city's assessment and taxation department. That's um, way better. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, section uh, two would be uh, deleted in its entirety and uh, replaced with a statement that says that fees would be charged in accordance with uh, bylaw C-1395. Um, section uh, 3.1 would be uh, deleted in its entirety and replaced with photocopying charges are in accordance with bylaw C-1395. And the schedule of fees would be uh, removed as those fees are now included in the new bylaw. Okay, thanks very much. And we'll move to Councillor Minhaus uh, for first reading of this bylaw, which should just totally roll off your tongue, <laughs> like poetry. <laughs> Thank you, Will May Given. Give the first reading to bylaw C 1334A being and, and amended to the fixed charges and for information services and document provided by the City Assessment and Taxation Department bylaw. Exactly. Thanks, Councilor Minhas. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, Councilor Minhas. Thank you, Will Mayor Given. Uh, give the second reading to bylaw C 1340, 1334A. Thanks, Councilor Minhas. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. Motion carries. Councillor Minhas. Thank you, Mayor, <coughs> Mayor Will Given. Have a third reading to bylaw C 1334A at this meeting. Thanks, Councillor Minhas. Any discussion to the debate as to the merits? Not seeing any. Please vote. Thank you. That motion does carry unanimously. Councillor Minhas. Thank you, Mayor Will Given. Give the third reading to bylaw C 1334A being it an amendment to the fixed charges for the information services and the document provided by the city assessment and taxation department by law. Thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. Any discussion or debate on third and final reading? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. takes us to on your scorecard uh, to page five of five, I think, and bylaw C 1366A, an amendment to the lot grading bylaw, probably Councillor Plott's favorite bylaw as well. Uh, Ms. Casually. Thank you, Mayor Given. The amendments to this bylaw um, would be updated to uh, some housekeeping items to reflect current titles. Um, a number of sections that currently uh, refer to fees would be replaced with wording that reflects uh, bylaw C-1395, and then Schedule A would be deleted in its entirety. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Plott. All right, no, I, I appreciate this one. I've, I've had a lot of fun with lot grading bylaws over the years, so... Um, I make a motion to give first reading to bylaw C 1366A being an amendment to the lot grading bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Any discussion or debate? I'm sorry, no discussion or debate on first reading. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries, Councillor Plot. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, I give second reading, I make a motion to give second reading to bylaw C 1366A. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, please vote. There we go. Sorry about that. Thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Plot. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Make a motion that we have third reading of bylaw C 1366A at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Um, please vote. Thank you. 
That motion carries unanimously. Councillor Plot. Thanks, Mayor Given. So I'll give a motion to have third reading of bylaw C1366A being the amendment to the lot grading bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please vote. That motion carries. I could just tell. Uh, and that will take us to bylaw C1405 being the outdoor event permit bylaw. I believe there was a small amendment to this um, and we were going to hear about that before we got to first reading. Um, if you would, Ms. Norris Kirk. So under part two, section or item six and eight are going to be amended to refer to section nine, not section 10. So it's supposed to reference, so that part is supposed to reference section nine, not section 10. So council is aware. It was just a misnumbering issue, if I understand correctly. Something was deleted and required everything else to shift up. So, uh, so Councillor Friesen, would you care to take that one for us? Do I have to refer to that then in the? I think it's just as amended. As amended, okay. <clears throat> I was usurped. No? Oh, okay. In the uh, lot grading bylaw, I was going to give mine a B plus. <laughs> I do move, though, <laughs> that we give first reading to bylaw C1405 as amended, being the outdoor event permit bylaw. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Uh, motion for first reading. Please vote. That motion carries. Councillor Friesen. I move that we give second reading to bylaw C1405 as amended. Thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Uh, open for discussion and debate. Councillor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Given. I've got a couple questions about this one. Um, first of all is uh, this replacing the special events bylaw, but in the old bylaw, the event under question was defined as something that was likely attr to attract 500 or more people. In this bylaw, it would be the bylaws that it impacts would be defined as something likely to impact two or more municipal services. I'm just curious if you could give me some background on why we're changing the definition of events that fit in under these regulations. Ms. Casually. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, the, so the intent, intent with the amendments is to improve communications within our uh, internal departments to ensure that the applicant has the appropriate permits that they require for um, the event. So as an example, an applicant can host an outdoor event that is only expected to draw, you know, 150 people. Um, but if the um, event is to include temporary staging or tents, then inspection services uh, would need to be involved. If food trucks were going to be on site, there's a business licensing requirement for that, so we would involve the uh, appropriate department. If it was uh, the event was being held on a city green space, as an example, then our parks operations department would need um, to be involved. So, with the five with the um, attendance projected at 500, um, it doesn't give us the same ability to coordinate those services um, internally. So it's really about streamlining the application process so that the permit uh, requirements are defined at the start and providing a bit of a, like a central uh, contact point for the applicant. And I've got another question. Ms. Bressy. And I'm also curious, the, f the fine in this bylaw for first fence is $2,500. I'm kind of curious why um, why $2,500 in particular and why this bylaw is, I know there's some bylaws we've got where we give a fine up to and we give some discretion to how much we find somebody and this one, it just says $2,500. I'm curious if there's any discussion around that number and around what an appropriate fine would be as we were reviewing this bylaw. Thank, thank you, Mayor Given. Um, the amount was determined in the previous special events bylaw, so I unfortunately don't have a history on that. The intent would be um, for a severe violation of the bylaw, so not that someone forgot to fill out a part of their paperwork application, but um, if an event was uh, being held on a city green space, as an example, and the turf was damaged to the point that it needed to be repaired, this would be an opportunity for the city to recover some of the costs associated to that. Ms. Cachelet, and uh, I think for additional context, I also would recognize um, Director Manuel. Yeah, uh, another thing to uh, uh, point out is that uh, almost all of our bylaws that have enforcement provisions have a general penalty provision, which is in fact the range that you're talking about. It's often like a $250 up to $10,000 fine. So an enforcement officer that would be tasked with this would likely look at that situation if the general penalty provision frankly made more sense, that's how they'd apply it. 
so so just for clarity um, the enforcement would still have uh, that general general penalty provision still exists and enforcement does have the latitude to determine a smaller fine amount if it was appropriate yeah that's usually the case so sorry is that in another bylaw or is this in this bylaw I want it's really important to me that we've got that ability so I just want to make crystal clear that it's in this so could you point to me where they'd have that ability in this bylaw yeah just give me one moment there thank you it's casually did you have anything I, it's it's well? se section 24 while people are eagerly looking that up. <laughs> uh, we'll also look to see if there's any other discussion or debate on second reading. Are there any other questions that we need to answer at this stage? Councilor Thies, did you have something on second reading as well? Um, I appreciate some council members will be looking up that section uh, 24. Um, actually, I have I have it right in front of me, and uh, I've gone over it, and I can understand Councillor Bressy's concern because um, reading 24, uh, it sort of enables, I guess, under provincial acts for them to to uh, give a fine. But I think what Councillor Bressy is alluding to, and it could be like fixed with like one addition of a word, uh, is 20, section 23A uh, for a first offense to a fine of $2,500. Um, and I think we could clear that up if that's a concern amongst other members of council for a first offense to a fine of up to twenty five hundred dollars, and that could be that could be cleared. But otherwise, it isn't clear in the bylaw as far as I'm reading it. Thanks, Councilor Leeson, Councilor Bressy. Um, do you have anything additional? Yeah, and that's kind of what I was what I was getting at. That's what I was going to suggest to you. So I'm actually um, I'm kind of curious. We haven't dealt with fines. Is there if I'm considering making a motion to amend it as such, but is there, can the administration see any drawbacks if we did amend this to read up to $2,500 instead of just reading $2,500? I think I'll refer that to Director Manuel. Yes, please. Okay, so the the challenge with up to twenty five hundred dollars is that it actually is kind of what uh, section twenty four covers in that um, typically twenty four would be used in an instance where you want to seek a greater fine than what um, is specified in the uh, the twenty five hundred dollar in most bylaws. The way it would work is the specified penalty would be the lower range and then you would use the general penalty provision to seek something higher based off facts presented to a, a judge. In this case, uh, it's kind of a, a bit of a reverse. Um, this isn't a bylaw that, uh, that I particularly work too much with and as far as the justification for the actual fine amount, um, my understanding is it was likely established kind of doing a comparable across um, different communities, but it does, I will acknowledge, it does um, go a little different than the rest of our bylaws do in that regard. So, and is there any reason council couldn't couldn't put up to $2,500 instead of leaving it $2,500? Is, does, do we ever do that for our first offense? I usually see that as second offenses, but. Well, the only challenge was something like up to $2,500 is um, you know an officer is not going to have that reference point to say you know I believe this one's a 450 like that's why we use the courts to establish what the severity is um, one of the reasons why this probably hasn't been flagged before now in, in my mind is I don't think we've ever charged anybody under this bylaw so it's it really is there I think as Ms. Casale said to address kind of the the worst of the worst if we had an instance but um, on a on a regular basis, it's certainly one we don't deal with very often. Um, what I could commit to do, though, is uh, work with uh, community services and uh, come back with uh, 
I don't think it's detrimental to what we're doing today, but I think we can commit to coming back and doing a review to see it doesn't make sense for us to have lower specified penalties based on, like you said, some different severities with the ability to seek greater punishment if necessary uh, with that general penalty provision. So if that helps satisfy the concern, I think we can definitely commit to looking at it, bringing it back. I don't believe it's fatal to what's in front of us today. I think the flexibility exists. It's just not as uh, normalized as we would usually do it. Okay. I, I think for me, I am going to make a, I, I think I am going to make a motion and that motion would be to uh, that, that council amend, amend first offense to read up to $2,500 and just to speak this, I'm concerned. I appreciate that we've never had this issue in the past, but also before the definition was for events of over 500 people. I think somebody with over 500 people would be really obvious to them. Yeah, I should probably talk to the city. I think it might not be as obvious to somebody arranging an event for 80 people that could potentially need need, the, need these many people. And I would hate to see an overzealous person who's just excited to do something, especially in our community. We've got people that just get her done. I see sometimes somebody just organizes an event they think should happen in four days. <laughs> And they get an idea four days later, they throw it and a lot of people show up. And I think that they could get themselves a little bit tr of trouble with this bylaw. And I'd hate to, I appreciate that usually bylaw officers go the other way. I would hate for them to not even consider that they could go lower under the provisions in that. And so I understand the need to sometimes give somebody a slap on the wrist. I understand the need to, uh, to recover our costs if something goes wrong. But I really want this bylaw to be there to my people, hey, next time, please do it the right way, not to actually be punitive to them. And I'm concerned if we don't have that up to and if we don't make it crystal clear in this bylaw that we'd like lower fines to be considered, if appropriate, that we could run into issues with the community organizers in the future. Director Miller? Uh, thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, I share the same concern that uh, Director Manuel talked about, about up to $2,500. I think it should be clearly defined for the peace officers. And then they always do use discretion and when they're dealing with different matters. We, what we could propose is uh, first offense is $250, second offense is $500, third offense is $2,500. I think that'd be easier for us to administer and uh, to enforce when we have to enforce. When you know, Most times they'll use discretion. If there is damage to the property, then I think uh, we'd try to deal with that as well. And uh, we could, stuff like that's usually negotiable to uh, work with the parties that uh, and to fix what went wrong, okay, so. Yeah, Councilor Bressy, were we, did you propose an amendment? Yeah, I did have a, mo a motion on the table, oh. but maybe it's a bad motion. I'd be uh, open to making other ones, but I don't. Yeah, it, you know, the, uh, the city manager also uh, came down from on high and reminded me that we will be reviewing this bylaw annually now. Um, and so we may wish to take administration's recommendation here um, and uh, flag this as something we would want to uh, maybe give administration opportunity to present uh, a more well thought out um, amendment to, for clarity, uh, appreciating the concern that you're raising um, and appreciating that uh, Director Miller said, well, we could do this, um, which is probably workable, but maybe we want to have an opportunity for administration to do that in a little bit more formalized way. Um, this bylaw, uh, at minimum, will be reviewed uh, annually now. So it's a, yeah. Will, will it be, we're talking about a fine though here, not a fee. I don't think that fines are getting reviewed annually. It's different. Are they? Dr. Miller? I think that's a, that's a good point. I believe it is. Uh, there is separation between the two, but we could also commit bringing it back through a community living committee in the next uh, couple months with a recommendation on what the fines could be set at. If we can make it, uh, I guess, pass it through today and then we'll commit to uh, bringing it back. Sure, maybe maybe refer refer to appropriate standing committee for review of the uh, 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 specified fine penalties. Yeah, I'm happy to change my motion if council consent to that. Sure, sure. sure. So if we're okay with uh, referring that issue, um, so we had a motion for second reading on the floor. Uh, after we vote on second reading, then uh, Councilor Bressy, if you want to make your motion as, as sort of arising from second reading, and then we move on to, to have. Okay, uh, Councilor Thies, did you add something additional? Uh, no, I was just going to add to the to the conversation. Um, I guess on the previous point, but if I guess I could speak to it after Councilor Bressy makes a motion. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Okay, so we have uh, Councillor Friesen's motion for second reading, bylaw C1405. Uh, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, Councillor Bressy, I believe you had some business arising from second reading. 
Yes, thank you. I would move that council uh, refer the matter of fines underneath the uh, outdoor, yeah, we're changing to outdoor event. So I would move the council refer the matter of fines uh, under the outdoor event bylaw to the appropriate standing committee. I speak to that kind of like a similar motion made earlier. I don't know if administration needs to come with a uh, written report. I think if they came with some verbal suggestions, that would be helpful. But I think this is worth committee discussing. I don't think it's worth putting a lot of background work into before committee discusses it. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on Councillor Bressy's referral motion? Councillor Thiessen? Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Given. Uh, I agree and disagree to disagree at the same time. I think that uh, if they're going to make any revisions to the policy, I think at the very least uh, we should have uh, the policy report and the justification uh, behind it so that we can see it in writing. Uh, if I were going to make a, a suggestion to administration, they, they will do what they want, but uh, it's kind of like a Section 23B uh, when they're talking of a second or subsequent offense to a fine of not less than 5000 and not more than 10000 if we jigged that A statement to not less than $250 and not more than $2,500, because uh, that might be amenable to the rest of council when that comes forward to committee. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Thiessen. Um, I don't see any other discussion or debate on Councillor Bressy's motion. Uh, so I'll call for the vote. Please vote on Councillor Bressy's referral motion. Thank you. That motion carries, uh, so we can move on to the motion to have third and final reading. Councillor Friesen. Thank you. I move that we have third reading of bylaw C-1405 as amended at this meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, please vote. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Councillor Friesen. And lastly, I recommend, uh, sorry, I move that we give third reading to bylaw C-1405 as amended, being the outdoor event permit bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Friesen. I don't see anybody ringing in with a burning issue. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. And that'll take us to policy 602, being the land management acquisition disposal and leasing policy. And I'd like to Councillor Plot for a motion. Thanks, Mayor Given. Um, I'd make a motion that we approve the amendments to policy 602, being the land management acquisition disposal and leasing policy. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Plot. Um, Ms. Casualty, do you want to give us uh, some highlights of the changes? Uh, certainly. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, a number of the amendments to Policy 602 are uh, housekeeping in nature, so um, amendments would include uh, amending the policy to reflect current uh, titles, um, uh, changing a section that uh, references just leasing to include leasing and uh, licensing, uh, deleting Schedule A as uh, the applicable fees and charges are now recognized uh, in Bylaw C-1395. In this uh, bylaw, or sorry, uh, policy, there is also um, a question about uh, reviewing and terminating the existing uh, lease agreements with the uh, related to the public utility lots. So, um, the amendment reason for that amendment um, it is part of the existing policy. Um, the public utility lots support activities of the utilities. They're a critical part of our storm water drainage system and also serve as pedestrian corridors. So when um, those lots are leased, sometimes utility companies are not able to get uh, timely access to the PUL. Um, so sometimes residents have installed fences, gates, or gardens in that space, and obviously they don't want those things damaged or disturbed. So there's uh, an added element there to access. Um, so it essentially is that in some cases the um, use is beyond what uh, was initially intended for and it also um, with those barriers takes away from pedestrians being able to use the lots to get around their neighborhoods. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Plot, did you make the motion? Thank you. Uh, any other discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor Bressy. Great. Thank you, Mayor Given. I'm going to, I haven't made one of these in a long time, but I'm but I'm going to do it today. I'd like to get some discussion on the table, so I'm going to make make a motion and see what you guys what you guys think about it. Uh, and that is that what the I'm uh, if you guys want to scroll to it, it's going to concern section ten of the new policy. So section ten, 
And part of what the changes policy do is it's is we're delegating more authority to the city manager to dispose of land in terms of under the old policy, if land was over a hundred thousand dollars, then council had to approve it. If it was under a hundred thousand dollars, then it was city manager authority. This is moving those numbers up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And in and in general, I really support that. I think we've done a lot of work over the last over this term to streamline our processes by delegating authority, and I think this is a very appropriate delegation of authority uh, in general. That being said, when it comes to downtown, I feel that maybe council wants to retain more control over what happens with public land downtown. And so I'm gonna make a motion that uh, I talk with staff beforehand, it would have the effect of saying, of allowing council to retain full authority on whether or not land gets dispersed, public land gets, disposed of when it's in the central commercial district, but elsewhere in the city, it would delegate any value up to $250,000 to the city manager to decide on disposition. And so what my motion is, is to direct administration to add in policy 602, section 10C, which reads, notwithstanding 10A and 10B, land in the central business district shall be approved by city council. So again, the effect of that motion is saying if we own it and it's downtown, council needs to sign off before it gets sold, no matter how much it's worth. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. That motion, I think, is uh, pretty clear. So it would have it would is essentially directing administration to add a 10C um, that specifies that city council retains the sort of uh, ultimate approval on disposal of land in the central uh, business district, uh, public land in the central business district. Open for discussion debate. Mayor Given, uh, could we amend the motion to um, read Central Commercial District versus Central Business District? Okay, yeah, uh, that's how it's reflected in our land use bylaw. Good catch, thank you. Councillor Pilat. Uh Thanks, Mayor Given. I think we, um, I, I'd spoken to uh, Director Glavin a while, uh, Brian Glavin a while back about um, identifying lands in the downtown core and the lands that I, I feel like we own in the downtown core. I don't think anywhere in a sell for less than $250,000. So uh, I don't know why we'd want more discretion over that space personally. So, um, you know, I, I'd, I'd have to understand which pieces of land would be less than that. I, I think we're talking about Montrose cultural site lands that's already been for sale and potentially a lot behind the Park Hotel and Rotary House. And, and those are fairly large tracts of land that I would think would be selling for more than that. So I'm not sure why we would need to put this oversight in there. So I wouldn't be supporting the motion. Okay, okay. thanks Councillor Plot. Any other discussion or debate? Uh, before I come to Councillor Bressy uh, to close, we'll go to Councillor Friesen. Just a, a quick question that I maybe should know the answer to, but when referring to the value of land, is it the what the um, current value would be on the market? Um, like, is there an, another way it would be valued? Ever? Mr. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, the way that uh, we would look at it from a land perspective, which would determine how we value the land, our first check would be looking at assessment. If the assessed value was near uh, our authority limit, we would get an appraisal on it. Um, so let's say we had land that was 95,000 uh, in assessed value, we would likely get an appraised value on that land. Um, if it was you know, $50,000 under the current policy, in the assessment, we would take it that that would be within the range of accuracy that our assessment department would have, and we would just use our authority as uh, administration uh, to dispose of that land without going to council. Does that answer your question? Okay. So, Mr. Clavin, can you just speak to that again? So, um, I appreciate you were sort of speaking to what the practice would be at the current value of 100000 And so, what would that, just to give me a sense of what would the sort of the range of tolerance be uh, if it was bumped up to 250000 would administration start to say, okay, well, we should s check that if it's something that the assessment was at 200000 or at 225000 or where would you say, okay, now we better check just to make sure? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Gibbons. So the way we would look at it, so the tolerance that assessment has or the aim for is between 95 and 105% of market value. So if it was close to 95% of, um, if it was at 95 ish uh, we would get an appraise, appraisal on that land. Sure. So 95% of $250,000, which I'm not going to do the math on. but okay. So 12500 would be how below that. Okay. okay. Thanks for the clarity. Uh, any other discussion or debate on Councillor Bressy's uh, amendment? Um, I'm 
Seeing none, then I will go to Councillor Bressy to close. Just to address uh, Councillor Platt's, Platt's point, I think what you might be referring to is we've looked at a lot of maps that have marketable land downtown, but I don't recall looking at a lot of maps, at any maps that have all of the land we own downtown. In terms of the maps we're looking at, only have the way that this policy defines marketable versus non-marketable is at that discretionary discretionary threshold. So by definition, I believe the, map, the maps that we spent the most time looking at would only have land that would fall into the authority that we're uh, that we're retaining. That being said, there are other pieces. I suspect there's a lot of other pieces downtown that don't necessarily appear on those maps that we do own. Uh, one example was recently to the Elders Caring Shelter. We had a sliver of land from a road, road right of way that we gave that organization, and I don't believe would have uh, appeared as marketable property on any of our of our li of our land. So I think that there's land we we might not even be aware of that we own downtown, and honestly, I, I don't know if there is or not, and I don't know what it might look like, and that's why I'm not comfortable delegating this authority in such a strategic part of our of our city. Okay, thanks very much, Councilor Bressy. Um, I, I appreciate that was potentially closed, but I just, I think that there's also an important distinction that I, that I believe that Council also has to uh, actually approve to make lands marketable. And so, for some of the other portions, uh, if I'm if I'm reading the bylaw, to actually, you know, um, the definition of marketable actually says public land owned by the city, which is vacant or improved, and has been identified by city council or city manager for disposition in accordance. So it would have to be identified first. And in the past, that's actually been an explicit step that council has to make something marketable. Um, so am I interpreting that correctly, Mr. Glavin? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Given. So if you refer to section 12 of the policy. Uh, the last sentence, all recommendations to designate uh, to marketable status shall be presented to the city council or to s the city council or city manager referring to section four. Section four is what uh, talks about the value of the land. Um, to give some perspective on this, um, the volume of land uh, that we put through for sale is relatively low. It would average likely less than one sale a year. Um, the burden on administration to bring forward a report on making land mar marketable is minimal. Um, so if we wanted to bring all land marketable to city council, it would not be a significant amount of work for administration to do that. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, any other discussion or debate on Councillor Bressy's motion? Councillor Platt. Um, thanks for giving it. So I, I guess I'm a little bit, that, that's, I really appreciate the comment there from the director, just so we wouldn't be marketing a lot of land. And, and that's maybe where I'm struggling with is if we're not marketing a lot of land, why we pull out specifically downtown. I appreciate your intent on this, uh, Councillor Bressy. One of the things I've heard, I guess, a lot from industry is because it's downtown, when we're trying to market there, we've put a lot more provisions and a lot more things on it that make it less uh, desirable sometimes because we overstep our bounds sometimes on that. And so that's why I'm still struggling with that. I could probably support it more if you said all the land than specifically singling out downtown. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at with why I'm not supporting it. Just, you know. okay. Thanks, Councillor Platt. Uh, I don't see anybody else in the queue. Uh, so we will call for the vote on Councillor Bressy's uh, motion. Um, please vote. Thank you. That motion does not carry on a three to three tie. Uh, and so we go back to the main motion as moved by Councillor Palat uh, to approve the amendments to policy 602. Any discussion or debate on the main motion? Not seeing anybody ringing in, I will call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. That motion carries. That will take us to policy 605 being the Boulevard use permitting policy. Ms. Cajolet. Thank you, Mayor Given. The only amendment to policy 605 um, it relates to section eight. So um, it would just be replacing the wording to say that fees are in accordance with bylaw C-1395. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Cajolet. Uh, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Your Eminence. I would move that council approve the amendments to policy 605 being the Boulevard use permitting policy. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, any discussion or debate on policy 605? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Please vote. Thank you. 
That motion carries. That'll take us to our last item, policy 608, being the memorial tree and bench policy, and recognizing Councillor Thiessen is in green. Councillor Thiessen, why don't you handle that one for us? Oh, thank you very much, uh, your graciousness. I would move that uh, council approve the amendments to policy 608, being the memorial tree and bench policy. Thanks very after much. my own green colored coat. Thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on these amendments? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Please vote. That motion carries, and I believe that concludes all of our business related to the consolidation of the City of Grand Prairie's fees and charges across a number of different bylaws and policies. As referenced before by the City Manager, uh, this will give Council an opportunity now to review fees and charges all at once annually as a part of our regular budgeting process. And so, Council, we can look forward to that, um, but we don't have to look forward to another uh, effort like this. Um, I also want to acknowledge the efforts of uh, all of the administration and staff who pulled together all of these different bylaws and policies. Um, just the effort of scraping all the different policies to figure out where we reference some for your charge uh, would have been a very, very significant task. And I want to acknowledge the work of all the staff that would have went to doing that. Um, we got to have a little bit of fun here this afternoon. Um, and it felt like it took a long time, but I'm certain that it wasn't anywhere near the amount of time that it took to pull this together in the first place. So thanks very much to everybody that was a part of it. And we're concluded. Thank you.